What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna look at dependent dropdowns and list boxes with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at dependent dropdowns and list boxes. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at dependent dropdowns and list boxes. So we have a main dropdown, for instance, this one. We click medium. When we do, the dependent dropdown changes. So we have red and green, right? We click large, we have blue and black. We click small, we have red, green, blue, and black. So imagine you're creating a, an app for a store. You want to pick what size shirt do you want? I want medium. Well, medium comes only in red and green, right? Well, okay, I'll get a large. Well, large only comes in blue and black. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. And we're going to do the same thing for list boxes too. So you can see I can click on this and then it's dependent uh, list box changes accordingly. So this is actually pretty simple. We're going to do a lot of things that we've talked about in other videos like bindings. And obviously we've talked about drop down boxes and list boxes in other videos. So if you haven't seen those, check the link to the playlist in the comment section below to check all those out. But basically we're gonna put all those things together in this video. So I've got a file called ddrops.py. Uh, we're using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So the first thing we wanna do is we need to import TTK. So uh, Kinter comes with drop down boxes, but they're kind of wonky and they don't look very good. The one that I just showed you is a, actually a TTK widget. So we just need to import that. So let's go from tkinter, import TTK. And we've done this lots of times. So we know all about this. So I'm gonna start out by creating a list of sizes. And we're gonna use this list to propagate the, you know, the drop downs and the list boxes. So I'm gonna call this sizes. And this is just gonna be a basic Python list. And inside of here, we could just, you know, say small, and then let's go medium and let's go large. Now, obviously you could put anything in here. I'm gonna stick with the whole shirt theme or the clothes theme, small, medium, and large shirts or size or jeans or whatever you want. Uh, but these are our sizes. And then let's also create a list of colors. And we're gonna need three of these. I'm gonna call the first one small underscore colors. And that's gonna be a list of something. The next one will be medium colors. And that'll be a list of something. And then finally, we'll have large underscore colors. And that'll be a list of something. So just for fun, let's say this comes in red. And then green. And let's say blue. And also black. We don't need a whole lot of these, but you know, we need a couple. So I'm just going to copy this and our medium will just be red and green, right? Let me put these on other lines. So just clean this up and let's copy blue and black. Our large colors will be blue and black. Right. So these are just basic Python lists, you know, that we've used all, you know, thousands of times in the past. And we can sort of clean these up a little bit. And there we go. So we've got a bunch of lists here and that's cool. So now let's create a drop down box. Now it's a drop down box for Kinter. When you use the TTK widget, it is a combo box. That's what it's called. So I'm going to call this my underscore combo. And this is a TTK dot combo box, right? Capital C lowercase B and box. And we want to put it in a root and we want the value to equal whatever this list is up here. So the value will be sizes. Okay. So now we can my underscore combo dot pack and let's give this a pad Y of like 20 just to push it down the screen a little bit. So let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that looked okay and it worked okay. So head over to our terminal and let's go Python D drops dot pi. And when we do, we get a box and it's empty. If we click on it, it has things small, medium and large, but on its own, it has empty. So we can change that if we want. Uh, let's head back over to our code and just right here or anywhere, we can my underscore combo dot current and set the current list item. So Python lists start at zero. So red is the zeroth item, green is the first item, blue is second, black is third, even though there's four items, you know, they start at zero. So if we want the zeroth item red to show up, 
we could just put current and then put a zero in there. So if we save this and run it, make sure that worked. We see now small is the default option. So, okay, that looks good. So now we need to bind this combo box. So let's say bind the combo box so that anytime we click on it, something happens. And to do that, we call my underscore combo dot bind. And remember when we bind things, it's always two things. It's the binding itself and then the action that we want to take. So for combo boxes, it's actually a little different than other bindings we've looked at. Usually a binding is like this, but with combo boxes, it's double. And inside of here, we type combo box selected. And the C in combo box is capitalized, the S in selected is capitalized, the B in box is not. So combo box selected. And now what function do we wanna run whenever this is clicked? Well, let's create a function called, I don't know, pick underscore color. Doesn't really matter what we call this, but uh, we're picking the color after, after we're picking the size. So I'll call this pick color. And up here, let's just define that. Now this is a binding, so anytime you do use bindings, you're passing an event into something, a keyboard event of some sort, a mouse click, a mouse move, a button click, something, an event. So we need to pass that event into this function. Now we're not actually gonna use this for anything, but the this thing down here is gonna send some information. And that, so this function needs to, needs to be listening for that information, even if we don't use it. So, okay, we can do that. And for now, I'm just gonna pass. So we've got this, first drop down box, let's come over here and now let's just create our second drop down box. Uh, let's go, uh, let's call this one the color combo box. So I'm gonna call this, well actually we could just come up here and let's just copy all of this stuff and paste it in. Instead of my combo, let's call this color combo, same thing here, color combo, and same thing here, color combo. Now we don't actually want anything to show up in this combo box by default. So instead of sizes here, I'm just gonna put sort of a blank list with a, an empty space and there's probably another way you can do this, but this will work just to have nothing listed there. So, okay, that works. So let's go ahead and save this and run it to make sure that looks okay. And okay, we get this one. And when we click here, nothing actually happens, but okay, this is good. So you might wanna use the grid system to put these side by side, whatever. This is just for an example. So we'll put it underneath, even though it looks kind of wonky. So, okay, now we come to the fun part of making different decisions based on what is picked, right? So how do we know what was actually chosen when we click down the first dropdown box? Well, we can call mycombo.get, right? Mycombo.get, just like we dot get anything else. And this will tell us what has been gotten, what is get, what has been selected, what has been clicked on in the dropdown box. So now it's just a matter of using an if statement to make different decisions based on that. So let's go if my combo dot get equals small, which is one of the options, right? What do we want to do? Well, we want to color underscore combo dot config, and we want to set the value equal to something. Well, what do we want to set it to? Well, if the small was clicked, we want the small colors to show up in that other dropdown box. So we can come up here to our small colors grab that variable name, set that value equal to that. All right, so let's go ahead and save this and run it to see if that worked. It only worked for one of them, but we can click small. And when we do, these things pop up. Now also this has nothing automatically showing. So we wanna fix that as well. So we can underneath this, we can color underscore combo dot current and set the current equal to zero. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. Make sure that looks good. So small, medium, large, we click on small, boom, it pops up red, green, blue, and black. So piece of cake, and it's just that easy. Now to do the rest of these, we just do the same exact thing. So I'm just gonna copy this whole thing and paste it in three more times, or two more times, right? And so this one will be medium, right? If medium is selected in the dropdown box, then we wanna show medium colors. And if large was selected in the drop down box, we want to show large colors. All right, so let's go ahead and save this and run it. Make sure that worked okay. So we can select medium, so red and green are shown. We can select large, so blue and black are shown. Or we can select small, 
where red, green, blue, and black are all shown. Just that easy. So very, very cool and uh, yeah, not, not hard at all. So now let's move to list boxes. Same exact setup, basically. Let's go list boxes. So I actually want these list boxes to go side by side. So I'm just gonna create a frame and let's call this my underscore frame. And this is a frame. We wanna put it in root. And that's my underscore frame dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of like 50 to really push it down the screen from those drop down boxes. And let's call this a frame. And maybe we'll copy this and move this down there. So now let's create some list boxes. And I'm gonna create my list one. And that's just gonna be a list box. And we wanna put it in my frame. Let me just copy this. And let's also create one called my list two. Now let's my underscore list one dot grid this to the screen. And we'll put it in row equals zero and column equals zero. And then we want to copy this and do the same thing for my list two. So we want to put this in row zero and column one. Now let's also give this a pad X of like 20 to uh, push these two apart a little bit. So let's go ahead and save this and run it to see if that looks okay. And we see, okay, that looks pretty good. We've got our two list boxes. So now let's add items to list one. So to do that, we've still got our sizes Python list here, so we can use that. So to do that, we can add these one at a time using a loop. So I'm gonna go for item in sizes. All we wanna do now is my underscore list one dot insert. We wanna put it in the end of the box and we wanna put in the item, right? So this is a position. So assuming there's already something in there, we wanna put it at the end of it. If there's nothing in there, the end of it will just be the beginning, but it still works as end. And what do we wanna put in there? That item, which as we loop through, will be each of these things one at a time. So let's go ahead and save this and run it, make sure that worked. I suspect it will. And we get small, medium, and large showing up in this box. So same thing here, we wanna, when we click on one of these, we want something to happen in this box. So the binding is very similar to our combo box binding. In fact, I'm just gonna copy this. So let's come down here and let's go bind the list box. I'm just gonna paste this in. Now this is, instead of my combo, obviously it's gonna be my underscore list one. Now this, it's not combo box selected, it's uh, let me copy this and it's list box selected, right? Cause this is a list box. It's not a combo box, but it's the same double brackets like before. And instead of pick color, let's create a different function and let's just call this, um, uh, I don't know, list underscore color. This is the list box, right? Okay. So now we want to create that list or create that function. So let's define our list color function. And just like before, we need to pass it an E, an event. We're not actually doing anything with that E, but we still have to pass it just like the other one. Okay, so now up here in this one, we went my combo dot get. It's a little bit different for a list box. For a list box to get the thing that's been clicked on, it is my underscore list one dot get, which is the same, but we wanna grab the anchor. And the anchor is the thing that's been highlighted, right? in a list box, it's it's anchor. So it's my list.get, but it's anchor. So just like before we want an if statement, if my list one.get anchor equals small, what do we wanna do? We wanna sort of uh, propagate the new list box with these small, let's see, uh, these small colors. Well, just like here, we have to do a loop, which is a little messy. Right, so we come up here, let's just copy this. And where are we at here? My list color. So if if it's small, we want to then paste this in and now make sure your, your tabbing is correct. So we need to indent here and indent here. So here, let's go instead of sizes, what do we want? We want small colors. All right, so. So for item in small colors, we want to my list two dot insert, and we want to put it at the end, right? So that should work. Let's go ahead and save it and run it just to make sure before we copy and paste all of them. So we click on this, 
Uh oh, did not work. What do we do here? Let's look at this. Ah, our binding here. So for the drop down box, it is combo box selected, but this is actually wrong. This is for a list box, it is list box select, right? It's not selected, it's select. So, okay, let's go ahead and save that and run it. See what this looks like. That should work now. Boom. We click that, it all pops up. Now we do these other ones. Nothing works yet because we need to write the code for that, but we can just now copy and paste all of this stuff in our my in our list color function. So two, three. So this one will be medium. And this will be medium colors. And this one will be large. And this will be large colors. Now let's save this and run it. Now we're going to get a problem. We're going to have a problem here. And you'll see what it is right now. When we click on, for instance, medium, okay, we get red and green, we click on large, uh oh, we get red, green, also blue and black, right? When we click on small, it just keeps going, right? So that's no good. So what we want to do is actually right up here at the top, every time this thing runs, we want to delete what's currently in list box two, right? So that's easy, we could just go my underscore list two dot delete. And now this is a range we want to delete from zero to end. And if you're on a Mac, it might be like end like that, or something like that, or Linux maybe, but end should work for most people. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. And that should do the trick. So we got small, we get red, green, blue, black. We click medium, we get just red and green. We click large, we get blue and black. And we can continue to cycle through these in any which way that we like. This still works. Very cool. So that's how you do dependent drop downs and dependent list boxes. And obviously, you know, we did a silly, you know, size thing here, you could do anything a menu for a restaurant, anything that has dependent things. One example is states and zip codes and things like that, or states and cities. So if you typed in or so if you clicked Missouri here in this box, all the major towns of Missouri might show up or something like that, you know, but anytime you have dependent data, that's dependent on something else. So if you click on this, you want different things to show up here, you can use this. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.